Hello and welcome to Cloister Bell, a Doctor Who podcast. Episode 7, Kablam. for this podcast and I'm afraid dear listener that you are rather stuck with me for uh, for this one as Rob is unfortunately indisposed but don't worry it's nothing too major and he will be joining us um, as of uh, normally uh, for the next podcast. Before we get onto the review though just a few things if you would like comment share our podcast we would be really grateful It'll help us to get out there more and hopefully allow us to get in contact with more fans such as yourselves. One thing Rob and I are very keen on is to get into a dialogue with our listeners, so please don't hesitate to get in contact. You can find us on SoundCloud, iTunes, we are on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash cloisterbell. We are on Twitter, our handle is at podcastbell, and we also have our own website, cloisterbell.co.uk. Um, so those are the places to get in contact and it can be about anything that we discuss in the podcast uh, the show in general your thoughts what you think of our take on the episodes and anything else that we've discussed so that'll be great uh, also just a, just a really minor correction in the podcast for the demons of Punjab it was 2014 not 2016 I saw Kate Bush live Uh, nothing really major, it was just slightly irritating that I got the air wrong. Talking of which, if there happen to be any Kate Bush fans listening and you're wondering whether it's worthwhile getting the recently released remastered albums, my recommendation is, oh yeah, get them. They are absolutely fantastic. I've been going through the albums, uh, listening to them, and one, it's, it's listening to Kate Bush and she's absolutely brilliant. But it's, the remastering is so superb, it's like listening to the albums completely afresh. It's brilliant. Especially the, the first album, A Kick Inside, that was a revelation. L- listening to how it sounds now, there was details and instrumentation in there that I never heard before. Really, really fantastic. Even um, Gareth Roberts, a few days ago at the time of recording, made a comment on uh, on, on Twitter where... The CD version that we have had for years, it's just, why have we had to suffer from it? Just this really muddy, horrible sound, bin the damn thing, and get the remastered version. It is fantastic. Really, really good. Anyway, enough of all that. On with the show. It's strange to realise that we are actually very close to the end of the current series. The, I mean, for one thing, it is... um, few episodes shorter than than what we are used to but the the enjoyment that one has had from 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 watching the series and just uh, just wanting to tune in week after week and the fact that the that this close it it's it just feels absolutely amazing that the that we're this close to the end um there hasn't been really a dull moment uh, the conundrum uh, episode was arguably the the weakest episode of the series but that was still diverting entertainment. The rest of the episodes have really, really held up. Um, And the fact that there's been such a fresh approach uh, has been fantastic. Chris Chibnall and all all those who have been involved in in producing the current season of Doctor Who have done an absolutely phenomenal job. And one of the main delights has been the TARDIS crew, Team TARDIS. The characters that we have, we have the Doctor herself, who played wonderfully, wonderfully well with Jodie Whittaker. The, the sheer excitement that she must have had uh, and has uh, and still has in playing the character is evident. It's there in every scene, with every moment that she delivers the line. She has hit the ground running playing the Doctor. It's been absolutely fantastic. And the rest of the characters, uh, Rob and I have said on occasion that maybe uh, Yaz has 
in terms of the writing needed to be brought up more into the forefront but it but in the grand scheme of things it's it's never really felt lacking on the whole it has been quite well presented that uh, team tardis the way that they come across the the writing the the acting has has all been fantastic and what's been really nice as a fan is encountering other people who aren't fans just general viewers who have been obviously aware of the show have tried to dip in every now and again particularly the last few years but have never really found it particularly gripping for one reason or another and they're tuning in week after week after week general viewers have in my experience and my circle of friends have been enjoying the series and considering what else has been scheduled on television in terms of what Netflix is producing uh, in terms of what is on normal terrestrial television other dramas that the BBC have been releasing which people are finding gripping although it's it's a completely different type of, of show people have been finding that love for Doctor Who so everyone involved in the, in the making of the show should be immensely proud of what they're doing they the, they they have created a series of really good stories which people are finding really really gripping with last week's episode the demons of punjab there have been quite a vocal group um who have been accusing the show of being politically correct i don't want to go too much into this um but i find it interesting that this is a, a criticism that has been leveled by some uh, with with the current series i can understand why people would be frustrated if they felt that Doctor Who was going down a politically correct route, because I haven't got time for political correctness. Um, it codifies language and behaviour, which is really restrictive. And, and, you know, and people are just wanting to tune in and watch entertaining drama. Yes, it can be thought provoking. Yes, it can stir up emotions and something like that. But it doesn't, no one wants to watch a political manifesto. But I feel that having watched the episodes people who are accusing the show of being politically correct i don't know what show they're watching if you're criticizing the show because it is looking at aspects of of history of other cultures outside the uk outside of britain well one that's not what politically correct is there's if you and also the show's always done that from the very, very beginning. Um, the first histor- the, the first proper historical after an earthly child was Marco Polo, for example. Then you had the Aztecs. Then you had the Reign of Terror. And we've done the Crusades, and, uh, which is in the second series. The show's always dabbled in, in different cultures. And in fact, that's the main aspect of the show. The Doctor's not just going into different cultures and different periods in Earth's history. It's going off to alien cultures and, and, all, and so on. So, I mean, there has been a, a running theme throughout most of, of the episodes in this current series, which is the evil, it turns out to be man, or turns out to be mankind. Um, but in that case, the show is as politically correct as the Twilight Zone. Um, so I, I don't understand why where people are coming from with that. I can perhaps understand the apprehension prior to the show, uh, the, the current series being broadcast, that people maybe thought the show could potentially go down this politically correct route. Um, but having watched it, it clearly hasn't done that. Or what, it, or what it's doing is, is, is delving into imaginative ideas and just telling cracking good stories. Uh, and so anyway on to the current episode which is Kablam and funnily enough is arguably the most topical episode of the series but as many have pointed out and I felt the same when watching it it's the first episode of the series which is the most traditional for Doctor Who Paul uh, Mateague is uh, first time writer for, for Doctor Who and he does an absolutely brilliant job and clearly has a love for the show. Following its broadcast, if you if you went onto Twitter and came across his Twitter feed, he was absolutely reveling in the positive reviews uh, the episode was receiving. And there was an, he even posted a photograph of 
himself as a child standing outside a police box, the TARDIS, and then um, as the writer of the current episode standing out the, the, the police box and clearly reveling in the absolute delight that finally he's he's written a Doctor Who episode. And there are nice little nods to the 11th Doctor with the Fez gag um, seen early on in the episode and the unicorn and the wasp gets a mention, so that's quite nice. And there is this feeling of this is typical Doctor Who. There are, the, the, there are certain nods in, in tone. Um, some people have, have said that the, given the, the how topical the episode is um, and how satirical it is, there are sort of nods to Series 4 of, uh, of the show's revival episodes like Planet of the Ood, which I think is a good comparison. But for me, Kablam has much more of a a balance and tone. Planet of the Ood was a, was a very good story, but very sombre. But of course it had to be, because it was it was commenting on slavery or enslavement. But this has a, a much more balanced tone. You've, you've got a, a wonderful... You have wonderful moments of humour. You've got the, the drama and the sense of urgency. There are quite eerie moments and a nice uh, twist with one of the characters towards the end and it's, it's really engaging but i don't think it just nods to the new the new series in terms of its tone for me it made me think of the sylvester mccoy era so season 24 season 25 uh, in particular the sense of D doctor who reveling in the normal the mundane but using that as a way to Con so strangely being able to tell an interesting story. There's something very British about that. Um, and when Doctor Who does it, and does it well, um, it, it produces episodes like this. When we had season 24 all those years ago, back in 1987, it may arguably not be the best pedigree of Doctor Who, but one thing it did do was provide entertaining stories and start grounding the stories in, in the real. Paradise Towers is a good example of that. This is a, a really strange adventure set in a block of flats and we have things like telephones and vending machines brought back into Doctor Who after a couple of years of of it being a bit too strange and alien perhaps for, for, for general viewers. And the, the robots... So, so we have um, this whole set on a depot, a mailing depot, um, so there's a feeling of the, of the real coming in and uh, and the robots with their design brilliant brilliant design but the, it, it kind of reminded me of the robotic uh, the robotic bus conductor in the greatest show in the galaxy so that there's that that feeling that this is a, a sort of a, a traditional doctor who story in that it kind of evokes memories of, of previous doctor who adventures but of course it's it can be in, it's very much its its own thing as well. You don't have to constantly reference these past adventures. It's it's Doctor Who, and that is enough. Yaz and Ryan, it's got to be said, make a really really good team. This has been seen in previous episodes, but once again, it really really comes to the forefront here. They're an absolute. Uh, they're great working together. Yaz herself has has proven to be very proactive. Um, she was the one in Arachnids in the UK who recognised that the Doctor was, was feeling lonely and did something about that. And and then later on in that story, we find that she's very proactive in, in, in wanting to find things out. And, and here, it, it's once again, she's the one who, when the Doctor gets the, the help me message, she's straight in there. And she's going, right, we need to do something about it. And... St you know, triggers the, the rest of the adventure in, in that regard. But what's nice as well is just seeing how all the other characters are completely confident in their abilities. We've seen what they're capable of in previous adventures, not forgetting there also been hints that there are adventures that have occurred which we have not been privy to. They have grown, they have developed, and have become stronger. And once again, we, we saw this in the very first episode of the series, but we see it here once again where Yaz and Ryan are, are, do absolutely brilliant detective work. And then and then there's the Doctor herself. Um, 
doing what the Doctor does brilliantly throughout the entire run of the show, which is standing up to bullies. I, for one, and I'm sure many, many other viewers uh, delighted in this when she stood up to a manager and basically told him, respect your workers. I think that's something that a lot of us in work at some point or another can, can relate to, and it's common sense. But just respect people out of a sense of decency. But that, that, that was a really good scene and, and was something that ran continuously throughout the entire episode. But one thing was really rather good, whether with these nice little twists with characters. So when the Doctor initially, when we first introduced the manager, for example, he's clearly not very pleasant, berating his workers, and the Doctor's straight in there uh, berating him for, for his actions. But then later on, it turns out that he's been aware that people have been going missing and he's been doing his own investigation. Um, so th despite initial appearances, he did actually care, which brings me on to another character. But I'll just hold off on that in a moment because this builds up. One of the cleverest things about Kablam is the way it uses its audience's knowledge of storytelling beats particularly in terms of Doctor Who, and just sort of tips a hat to them, but sort of slowly starts to put them to one side before finally we realise what's going on. So episodes like this usually end in sort of one, the technology is evil. Um, and this is something that has always been a, a social apprehension when new forms of technology emerge there's always something yep it can have these benefits but what about these cons that we, we need to be aware of and one of the things that a lot of people are being concerned about is the development of robotics in the workplace and artificial intelligence and how that is going to affect the workplace the workplace is going to change apps you know massively so this could have been a very easy thing to do for the episode to go, technology is evil, but it sort of hints at maybe going down that, that direction, but doesn't. The other thing is the corporate overload, overloads are evil. Um, it sort of tips a hat off in, sort of in that direction. There is a sense that you know massive uh, businesses and the way that they organised could be better, but in the grand scheme of things, of course they're not evil. That's far too simplistic. We have businesses, and the whole purpose of them is to provide a need, uh, build up business, bring in revenue, um, and actually, what we the face of the business in this episode is we have basically a human uh, human resources manager and the manager of everything. And they're actually shown to care about people. Their ability to investigate what's going on is a bit hampered by the uh, the way that things are organised. But um, but nevertheless, they they, they plough on and and they fight to try and find the truth. What just what I needed was it was a group of four people um, to just come in with a different approach and start finding things out. Um, Another way would have been one of the corporate overlords is evil while the others aren't. That sort of goes into the previous point. It could have been very easily, oh, that the manager of everything is um, is the one that is causing problems. Uh, alternatively, the, the whole thing is some kind of massive misunderstanding. But actually what Kablam does is, one, it's actually the technology that's helped. There's been this huge mystery throughout most of the episode of who initially sent the help me message which got the TARDIS crew uh, to land at uh, Kerblan headquarters uh, and find out what's going on. But actually it was the technology itself that was recognising there was a major issue, but it couldn't do anything about it. It needed human input to go in. It needed humans to come in and, and recognise what the problems were. The technology could only go so far. They recognised a problem, but it's humanity that has to step in and face it and deal with it. And in that aspect, Kablam stands out from the rest of the series because... And this goes back to what I was suggesting before, which is that there's a massive surprise with regards to one of the characters, and that is Charlie. And he is superbly written and superbly performed, and what we get is a fully rounded character, because when we are introduced to him, 
he's clearly someone very decent and ends up having sort of sort of an office crush if you like and has fallen in love and is a little bit bumbling but clearly cares but then there's that twist at the end where actually all the problems of people going missing is down to this man Charlie because actually turns out he is a radical terrorist so in the way that he has been written and presented we have a fully fledged human being with all their failings but it, unfortunately it turns out that he has been radicalized and is a terrorist and is willing to kill a lot of innocent people but that that was a really nice surprise but in that respect the the episode was really well written because unlike the the other episodes in the series where it is sort of it could be argued has has held up a mirror to us as as as, as mankind and going these problems we have overcome but there's a lot of problems to overcome but this one it goes hand in hand someone is presenting with a problem but everyone else the majority are just wanting to get on and um and care for people um so in some respects kablam is arguably the most positive episode in the series in the sense that um the majority of us are, are wanting to knuckle down and, and get on and, and and do genuinely care um so the episode is satirical uh, and topical in that it, it's looking at you know it, it deals with a character who's been radicalized and then becomes a terrorist but also there are th you know it, it sort of looks at the the constant random monitoring of um of employees rude treatment by by managers um and this whole thing about you know corporate speak um referring to people as majority organics rather than people and uh, things like that but um but it it doesn't feel heavy-handed it's it's there it's 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 blatant it's not subtle but there's a real sense of fun about the whole episode and that's what i think makes it really really gripping you can be topical and satirical but if you're just um heavy-handed about it and a bit too serious it can be quite off putting but actually what paul teague has done as the writer as i, as I said earlier has provided a really really bar balanced story there are some generally funny moments in there there are some eerie moments in there particularly with the robots uh, to begin with um later for it to be boo charlie is the most scariest um villain and of course the the story makes the desire to pop, pop bubble wrap um, as something questionable because um, we may be gas and explode or whatever um, so so that was quite nice a lot of people have have made reference to the ark in space uh, if you if you watch that story for, for obvious reasons but in in the case of this story bubble wrap is actually bubble wrap um, and as I said before actually I think that, that there is a comparison that one can make to the Ark in Space, which is what I was saying before about how actually, on the whole, this story is, is quite positive uh, about people. Yes, we're not perfect, and sometimes we, we, we may be rude, but on the whole, we're decent. Mr. Slade, he, he rudely treats his employees, but actually, it, later on, we see that he's actually cared. He's been taking note of... He's been noting... Um, people have been going missing and trying to find out. So despite initial appearances, he, he does care. And The Ark in Space is actually is a story that's quite positive about humanity on the whole. Something that perhaps uh, Rob and I can l look at if we ever get around to reviewing that story. Hopefully we will. So on the whole, I think Kablam was a very good episode. Um, if there is to be a criticism, I suppose it could be how it deals with Kara's death. Um, it's it's a bit of a, a strange one with with that. I think it's with everything else going on. Maybe it was just one ingredient that um, 
one ingredient too much because there's perhaps a philosophical debate to be had about whether there's a moral justification in sacrificing one innocent person um, in the hopes of saving thousands. Um, but compl but the, the episode doesn't really have that debate or doesn't give it time to, to think about it. Um, w having the Doctor explain that the system, which recognised there was a problem and informed the Doctor in order for her to step in and, and resolve a situation, use Kara's death, hopefully, to change Charlie's mind. Um, but she never actually, the, the Doctor that is, never actually passing judgment on it. it th that is one aspect of the story which perhaps doesn't work. But I think that's if you're really analysing the episode. Um, because that, that didn't initially occur to me when I watched it. It's only when I've been thinking about the episode a bit more since, since watching it. Because everything on the whole is really rather balanced uh, and it paced very well. And you're just, with everything else going on, there's there's enough there to enjoy and there's enough there to think. Um, so with, with something that profound in the episode, not really commented on, is, um, is a little odd, perhaps. But, as I say, that's probably if you're over-analysing the episode a, a bit much. Um, it is something worth exploring in and of itself. It is an interesting theme, it is a profound philosophical question. But uh, in that respect, maybe it was just one ingredient too much for the episode. But I maybe I shouldn't have, <laughs> have ended on that, because now we're ending on a downer, I suppose, when we, we shouldn't. This was a very good episode. Uh, Lee Mack was uh, a very welcomed um, guest for the episode. Um, surprising how relatively brief he was in it, actually. I would have I would have liked him uh, to have been a bit longer, but I, I like Lee Mack. Uh, I think he's a fantastic comedian, um, and he played the part very well here. He was very, very welcomed. It w just for personal enjoyment, I suppose it would have been nice if, he, if he'd been in a, a little bit longer, but... Um, but actually, in the grand scheme of things, uh, the character was written rather well, and he performed it really well. So, so that was quite nice. All the guest actors, all the regulars here, were were really good. And as I say, Paul McTeague, who was the author, uh, has provided a great episode. I'll very, very, sorry, very, very happily rewatch Kablam, and I do hope that he returns to write another adventure. Uh, I'm sure that will be the case because clearly he's a very talented writer. I am aware that he's written for, for other things. I don't think I've um, watched anything yet, but I'll certainly be certainly be on the lookout. Um, and yes, we'll, hopefully he'll come back. So... I will be re-watching this episode at some point. It was really rather good. Very enjoyable. Um, with a lot to think about and laugh about and just revel in the story. But that's it for now. And I think I'll go and listen to another Kate Bush album. But goodbye for now. <laughs>